Hey everybody, welcome back. Thanks for watching. So today the big question is, well, am I ready for Calculus 1? This also applies to AP Calculus AB and AP Calculus BC. So let's go through some of the topics that you're going to need to master in order to be successful in Calculus 1. Okay, so first, Algebra. So you need to know the definition of a function and how functions work and behave. You want to understand what a function is and what a function isn't. So you want to be familiar with the operations on functions. You can add functions, subtract, multiply, and divide. But also a very important operation is the composition of functions. So definitely, I'm going to start that, review composition of functions. Interval notation for real numbers, that's important, as well as set builder notation. So you want to know how to find the slope of a line as well as give the equation of a line both in slope intercept form and in point slope form. Now foundationally you're going to need to know your library of functions from pre-calculus. So that's the graph as well as the domain and ranges of the classic functions. So for example the constant function y equals x, y equals x squared, y equals x cubed, y equals square root of x. Uh, y equals the natural log of x, y equals e to the x, etc. So those classic graphs you should know quite a bit about. You should know how to find, um, not just of classic functions, but in general know how to find the domain and range of a function. Factoring polynomials is hugely important. Don't forget to review factoring the sum and difference of cubes. You should know how to find the zeros or roots of a polynomial. You should know how to uh, deal with rational functions as well as find their asymptotes, their vertical, horizontal, and slant asymptotes. Uh, you should know how to rationalize square root expressions. So for example, with that, if I have one over square root of x plus square root of x plus one, to rationalize that, remember you multiply by the conjugate and carry through the multiplication. So you should know how to deal with things like that. Okay, of course you should know your classic exponent rules. You should know how to deal with negative exponents, fractional exponents. When you multiply the same base, you add the exponents, etc. All that's very important. So you should know how to solve exponent equations. When it comes to logarithms, you should know how to graph a logarithm. You should know that a log is an inverse of an exponential. You should know all the classic log rules. And of course, solving log equations, hugely important. Okay, next let's talk about geometry. What do I need to know from geometry? So a lot of classic formulas, so for example, the area of a rectangle formula, area of a circle, area of a trapezoid, area of a sector, perimeter circumference, the distance formula, the Pythagorean theorem, and how to deal with similar triangles, how to set up ratios and solve. That's important. That's something students forget. So you definitely want to look up, again, similar triangles. Okay, next, let's talk about trigonometry. What do we need to know from the realm of trig? So of course, in terms of right triangle trigonometry, we need to know how to define the six trig functions, sine, cosine, tangent, secant, cosecant, cotangent. You should be very comfortable with radian measure. That's hugely important. You should know how to construct the unit circle, how to use the unit circle. So not just memorize, but understand the structure of the unit circle. That's important. The classic Pythagorean identities like sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta equals one, etc. And you should know the double angle formulas, uh, in particular for sine and cosine, the sum and difference of angles formulas for sine and cosine, half angle formulas for uh, sine and cosine. You should know how to solve trig equations. That's huge. Law of sines, law of cosines. And the last one I actually starred. So verifying trig identities is important because it gives you great practice with not just problem solving, which is the heart of math, right? So not just practice with problem solving, 
but you get experience dealing with these. You almost sort of force yourself to memorize these through working through these problems. They're, they're excellent, excellent problems. And I'm willing to bet that your pre-calculus book has a bunch of great trig identities to verify. Okay, what else? So lastly, we want to talk about sort of your attitude towards going into calculus. Okay, so let's take a look. So personal attitude is huge. When you enter calculus, it's a whole different world. It's more demanding. It's more, it's more difficult. It's, the ideas are a little bit more out there, more abstract. And so personal attitude is huge. So do I go into this with a growth mindset or do I go into this with a lot of cynicism? Well, it's your choice. And if you go in with a growth mindset, you're going to deal with the difficulties a lot better. So perseverance, that's so important. There's going to be points, I mean, that's, these go hand in hand, of course, they're one and the same. There's going to be points where you don't understand something or your calculation doesn't come out or you've made a mistake in a, you know, a 15 line problem and you're not sure where it is and you just, you need to press through. It's really, really important to persevere and don't give up. You've made it this far, press on. Strive to understand, not just memorize. You want to understand the definitions, the theorems, what they're telling you, and how they relate to the course as a whole. And then constantly review. All of this material builds, and you want to make sure you've got a very strong foundation. And with that said, good luck. Calculus 1 is a wonderful, wonderful course. Hope you do well.